In this video, we are going to discuss a creative game played by Dubov Daniel vs. Ian Napomniachi. And this game was played in Levitov Rapid in Amsterdam on 9th of uh, on 26th of September 2023. And the game is a very well played by Dubov Daniel and is simply out prepared, just out outplayed Napomniachi. And um, Dubov style is uh, like uh, I think all the all the viewers watching the video already know who Dubov Daniel is. He is a very strong player, very creative player, known for his creativity on the chessboard. Uh, he is a very strong grandmaster from Russia, having a more than uh, plus twenty seven hundred rating. A very strong player, and uh, Nepomniachtchi needs no introduction. So here we ha have a game. Uh, it was it is a rapid format game, a very interesting one. So without any further ado, let's quickly jump right into the video. But before starting the game, I am having a request. If you are new to our channel then make sure to like the video share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel it is free for you but it helps us to motivate so now let's quickly check out the game so dubov play playing with white pieces starts the game with 1d4 and nepo with the black pieces replies with knight f6 knight f3 and we have d5 and now there are many ways to continue the position you can play the move c for the queen's gambit you can play the move bishop to f for the london but dubov went for something else which is the Torre attack. With Bishop G5 variation, a very not very known in the club level, but yeah, Bishop G5, also known as the Torre attack. After Bishop G5, Black played the move Knight to E4, trying to get rid of the Bishop. White simply moved back uh, the Bishop on H4, keeping this pin. So the E7 pawn is, is uh, simply pinned because the Queen is hanging. And here we simply have another common move, which is H5 by Nepo. And the idea of h4 is pretty common, I guess. The idea is to play the move rook g8 followed by g5 followed by h4 and trapping the bishop. So what Dubov did was pretty natural. He played the move h3, trying to make a room for the bishop and also preventing any back rank ideas in the future. So Nepo simply went with the plan of rook g8 g5. And here we have knight d2 by Dubov, trying to hit the knight. g5 by Nepo. After knight to d2, uh, g5 is the best. You can also capture the knight on d2, but uh, if you try to capture the knight on d2, now there is no g5 idea, so basically the rook g8 h5 ideas is looking extremely useless now. So that's the reason you have to go g5. Knight takes, and now we have pawn takes on h4. If you try to capture the knight, I can simply capture on g5, and white is simply a pawn up. You can simply count the material, and uh, it's a very pleasant position for white. So black decides to capture the bishop and now knight to c3. And already I'm thinking that white is better in this position. The idea is pretty clear because uh, black is having these two double weak pawns on the h file. The king can never short castle now uh, as the rook have moved and the king is a king side is ex extremely exposed. Uh, but the good thing is the, the rook is open on the g file. So maybe it's going, it can help black in some ways. So after knight to c3, black plays the move e6 trying to open up the bishop. And Dubov did what any player should do, which is trying to open up the center because the king can no longer castle on the king's side. If I talk about the queen's side, you have to move three pieces in a row, then only it will help you to long castle. But white is not giving any time to black to do that. So after e4, we have bishop to h6. If you try to capture the pawn after knight takes, white side is pretty simple. White can even try to play the move queen, G, um, queen to d2 to long castle and even try to break the center with g5. And the knights are pretty good in this particular position. So bishop to h6 trying to take control of the dark squares. Here we simply have knight to e5 by Dubov. Knight to e5 very interesting move, you are simply trying to hit the pawn on h5. Trying to centralize the knight, maybe queen f3 can be an idea trying to hit the move, hit the pawn on f7. So after 95, Nepo did was queen g5, which is the best move. You're trying to protect the move. You're trying to protect the h5 pawn, which is the only way you can protect the h5 pawn by playing the move queen to g5. If you try to play something else like knight to g7, I'm, white is extremely happy to capture the pawn on h5. And after takes queen, queen into h6, trying to remove the powerful bishop. And now white is way better, you think. Uh, and also white is like material. So queen g5, and now white simply captured on d5 now again white is simply a pawn up if you try to capture with the pawn knight d5 
Sadly, but Knight into C7 is kind of unstoppable. You, you can't really stop it. If you try to play Knight S6, I can simply capture the Knight and followed by Knight C7. So what can you do in this position? If you try to move the King, I can simply capture Knight S7 and you lose the Queen. So there was there wasn't much that Nepo could have done. So he simply moved the King to F8. Bishop C4 simply trying to develop the pieces, which is a very interesting way. Bishop C4, we have F6. If you try to capture the pawn in this particular position, white can simply capture the pawn on h5, threatening mate in one, and uh, like it's already lost position. But uh, to all those, if you if black tries to capture the rook, simply king e2, the queen is attacked, and the checkmate is hanging. So you have to defend the checkmate, and white can simply capture the queen and eventually win the game. So black made the move f6 first in order to capture on g2, but now comes the move simply. D into e6 by the move done. He's not afraid of giving up the pieces. f5 trying to capture the piece. If you count the material, black is material because white just uh, very recently sacrificed the knight on e5. But here comes the move. Queen to f3 check. Finding the best move. And what's cool about this thing is if you try to play the move queen f4, which is the first instinct of any player trying to trade as many pieces as possible, here comes the move e7 check. <clears throat> and if you try to capture the pawn, white can simply play the move knight d5 check, followed by the queen is hanging. And uh, what can you do next? If you try to move the king, I can simply take on h5 as well, king e7, followed by still the queen is hanging. And uh, what can you do if you try to move the king? I can simply take on g8, followed by a new queen is being made. So it's completely winning for white. That's the point. So that's the reason you can't really play the move queen f4. King g7 trying to run away with the king, but now comes queen f7 check, king move, and now simply e7 by the wolf. The idea is to simply take on everything on g8, followed by, for example, if a6, I can simply take everything, and eventually I can make a queen, eventually win the game. So bishop to e6 played by Nepo, trying to sack the piece. Uh, if you try to play the move bishop to e7, trying to control the square, I can simply still take over here, followed by knight d5. And I'm not sure how black is going to defend with a knight f6 for, and also knight c7. So it's completely lost for black, material wise. So bishop e6, so Nepo's idea was to simply connect the rooks by sacrificing the bishop, which he did. But after knight e4, again an excellent move played by Dubo, trying to hit the queen. Queen g7, knight came in, trying to hit the rook. Now Nepo went for trying to capture the pawn on h g2, trying to put some pressure on the h1 rook, and now simply came the move. Bishop to g5, hitting the queen as well as protecting the rook as well. So you can't you you aren't having much from the back pieces. My dash simply take on the rook, followed by making a new queen and eventually winning the game. So Nepo went for cap sacrificing the queen, trying to, to get something, trying to get the queen, but after rook g1 on the movement 24, he decided to resign the game. The, the reason is quite simple. Uh, white side is to simply make the queen and you can't really stop it. Like if you even try to play knight g7 trying to cover the d1 square, I can simply play the move bishop into, sorry about that, bishop into b7. And if you try to move the rook, simply comes the move bishop c6. And now you can't really stop me from um, like making a new queen. And even at at very least, I can simply sack the rook as well, followed by bishop takes, making a new queen, rook takes, takes, and you can just count the material, white is simply a piece up, for, uh, and in the end, he's going to win the game. So that's the reason after bishop, after rook g1, Nepo decided to resign the game. Simply a flawless, a flawless chess game played by Dubov Daniel to beat Nepo Um uh, He simply outplayed Nepo completely and he won a fabulous game. So maybe you can try out this particular opening. It is a very interesting opening to play the move bishop g5 because it is not so co common to play this particular opening. And uh, if you prepare this from the white side and if your opponent is not really prepared to play with the black pieces, he's really going to get some trouble like Nepo, like even the Nepo, the, the man who has played uh, two world championships uh, in a row, wasn't able to, uh, wasn't even know how to continue this position. You can try and try to make your opponent think and maybe this opening can help you to win a lot of games.
So I hope that this video might have helped you to improve your knowledge and skills in the game of chess. If it did, then make sure to like the video, share this video with everyone and make sure to subscribe to our channel if you are new to our channel. I am going to come up with these new exciting videos like this. Tell me in the comment box below what video do you want and I am going to see you soon. Till then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.